Hi there. I have uh, only two written journals left unrecorded, so let's do one. This is from 721, the first of that day, and the Mayan day was seven deer. For three days now, I've wanted to journal. The body has been too much of a bother, a burden though. During times of solar activity like CMEs or solar storms, CME, uh, coronal mass ejections, or solar storms, it, it goes through increased pain. Now, friends, this can't only be me experiencing this. I'll bet that more than a few of you have challenges during solar storms. Uh, and they won't necessarily manifest as pain. They'll manifest differently for you. You might try just observing on spaceweather.com, and I've got the link in the transcript, to see if the sun's activity correlates with your life, your consciousness in some way. Now, um, if you like, click over, open a tab on spaceweather.com, and I'm going to take you down through to show you what I look at. All you need to keep up with is a few things in the left column. All the stuff on the right is, is interesting, but it's, it's not what I follow. The two numbers at the top give the solar wind speed and density. And you'll develop a feel for what these numbers mean. Uh, do know, though, that when the speed is 500 or more, it's storming. Now, further down, you'll find two more relevant numbers called the Planetary K Index. I don't have a good mental grip for what that is, but these are translated directly to tell when they indicate storm, or it might say calm or, or whatever. I mean, they give the translation. Uh, I think they're numbers like 1 through 6. I, I don't think I've seen it above 6. I don't know. Check it out for yourself. You know. I'm not mentally anchored all that well. Now, finally, the last thing is just ben beneath that. It's the north or south orientation of Mother Earth's magnetic field. Now, it's believed that solar storms penetrate a south-oriented field uh, and not one pointed north. These days, they've altered that a bit to say uh, they penetrate a south-oriented field much easier than one pointed north because we have had auroras when the field was pointed north so it can penetrate. Now with those few things from this rather busy page you have all you require to begin to make some sense of the solar wind and more. A nice plus is the gorgeous pictures of auroras and from not just around the world, but from our space-based technology as well. You'll always find great aurora images here. Between keeping up with that and my astrological transits, it can really help you to make at least some sense of the chaos that things seem to be at times. If it wasn't for my awareness of this solar sensitivity, I might be worrying that something was wrong with my health, maybe even checking with a doctor. As it is, I've seen this so often that I simply know it'll pass when the sun settles down, and that's nice. So we have our ups and our downs. We're plugged into this cosmos and we're influenced by it. It can't be avoided if we're walking around in these skin suits. And actually, trying to avoid it is also known as resistance, as fighting life. And I've discovered that's not too sensible. Fighting the inevitable is wasting your energy and doing no good while you're at it. I say and have often said that it's time for more acceptance on the part of mankind. Many of us are so busy spotting and researching all the things going wrong in the world and our personal life 
that we tend to lose our joie de vivre, our joy of life. It's there for us, but we crowd it out with our constant resistance to what life brings our way. We're a curious sort. Here we are, veritable gods, always little g, you'll notice, yet we're so busy sweating the small stuff and the great. Very strange. I'm happy to see so many of us pulling back from this, though, pulling back from life. No, I skipped a line. Pulling back from this, though. Many from 3D life in general. Now, while that may seem glum and not a happy thing, pulling back from life, if we just hang in and take another look, we can see it and life in an entirely new way. This is the sorting out promised in the Bible, I bet. There's a real detaching that's going on, at, at least among those I'm in touch with. We're finding ourselves much less interested in things we once held dear. And it's strange. We feel ourselves changing and not all of it by our own choice conscious choice or design. It can feel a bit spooky. Still, those of us who are both inward focused and in heart will do just great with this. As we're quietly observing, we'll begin to be shown some overall themes. Along with this general pulling back comes an increased intuitiveness an inner sensitivity to that still, small voice, also spoken of in the Bible. Very strange. I'm not at all a, a Bible-thumping sort, not religious at all, but I've got to give the book credit for obvious completions of what it shares. What on earth did I mean for that? I've got to give the good book credit for obvious completions of what it shares. Sorry, I don't know what I meant. I'm so hesitant around religion these days. How do you do with that? I suspect I lose more subscribers to sharing my views on that than anything else. Not that I've researched it. I don't trust YouTube's honest reporting of numbers enough to consider it worth my time. Besides, do consider, if you're sharing your heart and your message here, what do you care about who likes it or who doesn't? You can't be driven by such things. It's pretty wild to consider someone changing their heart's message due to popular demand. Oh my God, there's a funny one for you. It would be a lost soul indeed to do that one not likely to have yet found their true heart message either. And you know, it doesn't matter one bit. That's what I wish everyone would realize, how very much freedom is truly ours. It's there for the taking. We don't have to be answerable to anyone. Once we all start reporting in to no one but source and self, oh my God, the world will change for the better in an instant. We'll get out of one another's lives. Quit trying to tell them how to live, as if we've got the answers, right? Do you have all of the answers? I know I don't. Or if I do, I don't have full access to the mirror. One of the most surprising and initially off-putting things I've discovered is that there isn't anyone who has everything right. No matter who it is I would begin to follow, before too long I'd discover something I just knew they didn't have quite right, didn't have the whole story on. Now at first, I'd be disappointed, <clears throat> feeling how that took them down a peg in my view. I was in search of so, someone so perfectly connected with Source that they got everything right, parenthetically. My way of telling that what was right was by resonance with heart. 
I'd be a bit sad if I'd followed them for a while, but I'd move on restless to find that perfect one. Now, hopefully you can tell that was a while ago. I've since grown so much that I hardly recognize that behavior. Oh, the relief that came when finally I got it. Source, shine the light on what was going on, at least to some extent, and it was great. We're all one, right? Well, we need one another to make up the completeness of the whole. Each one has specialized, if you will, in, in their own path, and for the things central to their path, they are generally right. Yet, when we try to generalize our rightness, we get off into areas where we just don't know. Often, we use the mind to figure out how we think things should be, and then believe what the mind says. Not always, but often enough to note. The deeper we get into heart, though, we do make contact with something so unexpected, at least for me, and that's what I've been calling humility. Who'd have thunk it, huh? Anyway, in our emptiness and openness, we find a divine humility. It's what lets us know that we really don't know anything much and that what we do know, or think we know, isn't right and is in the way of what Source would show us. Too many words there, but I hope the main point came through. We lose ego in heart, and it's ego who wants to always be right or find someone who is. Source apparently just didn't plan it that way, since no one is totally right all the time, and that includes moi. It is no longer the age for gurus and such teachers as those who have huge followings. At least, that's the way I see it. I think we'll find that fading out going forward. Instead, it's the time for each one of us to find our own way within and get a big shock. What is that? That we are those teachers. That we have specialized, each one of us, down through a heck of a lot of lifetimes in our own special things, and that we are the best, the only ones to share that. We don't need to get it from anyone else. Plus, we'll find we each have a teacher who is simply divine, right within. It's time we came into our own light beings of Earth, Mother Earth needs us to step up to this, to take on a new higher view or an emptier view of self. We've been held down and shielded too long from the truth. For whatever reasons, it really doesn't matter at this point. Let's not get off into any sort of blame gaming. Instead, let's just pull out of all the false and phony news and stream of lies purporting to be true and go within. While the frequencies are rising as they are, the powers that were are finding it impossible to keep us thoroughly down. We're all making some sort of contact with heart, those of us who are ready, that is. We're getting one heck of a cosmic tune-up. Oh my God, and we'll never be the same either. The changes we're all making are shocking, or they would be if we'd stop and take them all in. Still, it's better that we don't. It's enough just to keep up with our now moment, and that's all we're called on to do anyway. We're dropping our burdens right and left, most of which have to do with time. Have you noticed? Once you drop belief, 
in the importance of past or future, so many burdens go up in smoke on the spot. It turns out that there were and are many and convoluted ways and methods the powers that were had to keep us distracted and in the groove, their groove, that is, not ours. Nose to the grindstone, it was as long as we accepted the set of values they tried to plaster all over us and right from birth with their nasty injections and all the rest. Oh, do let's take a nice deep breath and expand out, way out into your aura and just enjoy what a life without any more believing all of that crap is like. Throw it off. We're beginning all together to breathe much more deeply and be much more relaxed. They want us tense, anxious, concerned. It's our fear that we're dropping a lot of it. And what doesn't drop naturally, I counsel all of us to sit with and face. There are important goodies for us there, but only if we're willing if we're open enough. And as gods and goddesses, so to speak, what have we to fear? Hello. That's what we're discovering, that we were falsely held in check only by believing all the nonsense passed off as history and scientific fact and truth were they able to control us so well. Well, no more. We So many of us are finding out, and maybe for the first time in years or decades even, what it's like to be relaxed. I know I am, and it's great. So, let's all choose to celebrate. If you're anything like I was, you weren't once thought that if you weren't taking in something important or worthwhile that you were wasting your time. You were always forcing yourself to read, to view, to do, search, go for this or that. Oh, for all the right reasons, of course. Well, that's how it seemed. But no more. Now, a big part of our secret is that we're dis-identifying from the mind. It was the mind doing all of that. Many of us have already discovered that what is programmed in us isn't us. It's the mind. And that's all. You see, there's no way they can even touch, much less program, anyone's heart. It ain't happening now or ever. So, once we find our way in there, well, the powers that were are toast. One less slave for their mill. God bless them as well, of course. I don't wish anyone any harm at all. I do, however, want them to be out of my head and my aura. That much I know I have control over, and I'm taking that territory back. Plus, I've completely thrown over their whole list of do's and don'ts. Those are mine to choose. No more programming for me. Now, folks, do know that to really ditch the programming, you will have to ditch the tube, the TV, I won't say more about that or try to reason with you about it. That's just how it is, and you'll do it when you're ready, so let's move on. Just know that dropping this or that is much easier than it ever was before. It's got to do with the rising frequencies, I've no doubt. They give us support. Plus, with us pouring less of our energy into anything here in 3D, we're just more present with higher self, you see? With the higher dimensions. Do know that you are present on many dimensions. And for all I know, all of them. I don't know. Just don't sell yourself short. 
Quit believing anything at all you've been taught or told. Go within for the truth, for what resonates. Be very suspicious of something anyone is trying to tell you that you don't feel right about. Don't ignore that. Go by your feelings more and more. You'll find them far wiser than your thoughts. Why? Maybe because they're directly connected more so with heart than the mind is, though I don't know for sure. Let's also support one another as much as possible by staying in heart with them. I comment at least two or three times more than I ever used to. Whatever used to hold me back just isn't there these days. And I've noticed how a few upbeat comments on a video that people have been trashing really changes the overall tone. It makes those who come after that much more likely to join in the upbeat tone. Things simply are not as bad as the powers that were want us to believe. Not at all. They're relying on keeping us fearful and angry all the time, which you will be if you follow the major media. Well, add to that depressed. Instead, so many of us are falling out of fear that we refuse to see things through that lens. We have flexible perspective. We won't be controlled like that. We find we get to choose if we will simply exercise our free will. We choose what we will believe. Oh, this is a very good time indeed. Stay in heart, friends. That way, even when you're not online or connected, that's only what seems to be. You really are. That's the central touch point for our oneness. Really and truly, we can all be found, be contacted in there. It's time to claim not only our worth, but our essential nature, which is fully and truly divine. Own it. Do spend some quiet time with that. It will take some intent focus and claiming of that as your reality. And at first it will seem very strange. Be ready for that. Note what it is. Just observe. What will you see? Well, report it to me in the comments and we'll compare notes. In your change process, you're not carving out a new identity. You're finding your true identity, which is and was there all along. A god or goddess goes through life much differently than a slave. We've got some old programming and beliefs to pull and discard to change. They get in the way. So let us all stand up tall and choose our own beliefs. Let us listen to heart as we choose. We'll be guided. Friends, you'll be amazed to encounter your own fount of wisdom in there. Gods are wise, you know. We just are. Let's see. P.S. Though I didn't come out and call it that, being under the weather, when the sun acts up, can also be called an ascension symptom. Good day, friends. Meet you in heart.